Oh, hey, hey guys. Man, Power of Six was a bad episode. I was just re-watching it to see if it would get any better with time, but it, it really just is just as bad as I remember. I'm going to go feed the cats and see if it gets better, but I doubt it. This is my chance! Just a couple of squirts of this love potion, and he'll love this episode! He'll do another review, and his credibility will be ruined! <laughs> there we go! All done! <laughs> oh, let him disappear! <laughs> Man, those kitties love them some fancy feast! Alright, let's watch the transformation and see if that makes things any better. Oh man, those colors, the flashiness, that weapon, the helmet, those, those little helmet faces. This is amazing! Was I completely off on this episode? Maybe I should make another video. People need to know that- No, wait. This episode was garbage. You couldn't even make me love it with a potion. Hello, Power People, and welcome to another Power Rangers Super Mega Force episode review. Get your generic pink hearts ready, because today we're reviewing episode 11, Love is in the Air. If this review seems to be a little bit late, it's just because this episode was not aired or leaked anywhere early. I had to watch it on TV just like everybody else. Speaking of love, I'm loving that you guys are leaving comments on my reviews and even asking me when the next ones are coming out. Community engagement is so massive for me. Never be afraid to leave a comment, ask a question, let me know what you think. The power unites us and protects us all, so go for it. Noah sets up some trick shots for Jake to do on the soccer field while he films them. Is Jake on the soccer team? They've given us a few hints that he likes soccer, but it just seems weird that he's not playing for the school. It just seems like a dangling character quirk, something for him to do when they need something for him to do. Connor from Dino Thunder had a few stories centered on him being on the soccer team or wanting to be a professional soccer player. The car calls for his butler. This is the monster of the day, but we don't get his name until past the halfway point. He asks the butler for tea and Lavira walks into the room. It turns out that he grew up with her and has a crush on her. He makes her a cup of tea as well with a love potion. I almost didn't catch that it was a love potion because it was in a bottle labeled love potion that was in the shape of a big pink heart. Lavira is watching Jake play soccer because the Rangers' downtime activities are key to their plans for world domination. Monster Butler brings out the tea and Lavira drinks it, but instead of looking up at Monster Butler, she looks down at the screen and falls in love with Jake! Oh, my sides. Lavira actually calls the monster Butler, so at first I thought that was really his name. She sends him to go capture Jake. The civilian fight we get with the x -Borgs is actually pretty good, with the choreography showing that the x -Borgs are only interested in Jake, ignoring Noah. Noah calls the others on his go say morpher. Yay. But then it flashes directly into his Megaforce morph. Interesting. Jake is Far too cool for that. Instamorphing while swinging around a pole. Bonus points awarded for morphing while not even holding a morpher at all. And then the other three rangers just show up. We don't even see them run in, just poof. The rangers then go super mega as slowly as they possibly can. We see each ranger insert and turn. Their key. We then get the full Super Megaforce morphing sequence, one ranger at a time. 
Oh man, this story ran quite short, didn't it? Hey, look at that! The first team is back on the scene. Yes, we get another Mighty Morphin change, and unlike last time, they actually do quite well, clearing out the Exborgs and chasing off the monster. The next time we see them, they run around a corner and power all the way down, and this appears to be an original shot. So, they actually have the MMPR suits, at least the ones used in Gokaiger. That's a lot of restraint for them not to use them a lot more often. Why does the Armada ship use L cars? But here's the real surprise, kids. The following shot in the Armada warship is original footage. This shot of Lavira pining over Jake does not come from Gokaiger. Think about that. The Lavira suit, the Monster Butler suit, that flag behind them reconstructing the set. Man, I hope they get their money's worth out of that. That cuts deeper than any sword is a line I would more expect from Super Sentai. All right, you want the polar opposite of original footage? The next scene gives us a look at what a world with dubbed Sentai would look like. This scene with the Japanese woman and the garbage is taken directly from Gokaiger and dubbed over. Seriously, it was so weird to watch. I know most of the battle footage in Power Rangers is dubbed, but we hardly ever get humans dubbed over. The rest of this episode is going to work on the whole Jijia thing. So they try to throw us a curveball. When the Rangers get together and try to figure out why they would want Jake, it's Emma who suggests that maybe it's because he's cute. But they all laugh, so maybe it was just a joke? Anyway, the monster attacks the rangers with literal flames of jealousy. They don't seem that effective, though, as the unmorphed rangers aren't really harmed. Lavira transports down and defends Jake, and we finally get the monster's name, Invidious. Invidious? Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad name, but wouldn't Envidious be better? Very nice original fight between the monsters as Jake gets tossed around and the other rangers wonder what the heck they're looking at. When they finally snap out of it, we get a full four-way Megaforce morph. This episode is really stalling for time. I mean, this is the second time this episode we've seen Noah's Megaforce morph. Jake tells Lavira that he likes someone else. Emma gives G an elbow and says, we all know who that is, huh? Ah, children's television, written with the subtlety of a sledgehammer. The Rangers go super mega mode again, and I'm getting as dizzy as Picard is. Jake decides that they should fight Invidious's firepower with horsepower, and we get a new tribute morph, Turbo. But something that only nerds like me catch? Jake holds up a black Ranger key. Turbo didn't have a Black Ranger, and no, I'm not counting the Phantom Ranger because that would be Orion's key. This comes from a gag in Gokaiger where they confuse Turbo Ranger and Car Ranger. Yes, Sentai had a season called Turbo Ranger, and no, it's not the season that we turned into Power Rangers Turbo. They use a turbo attack that they hope is fast enough for you not to notice that they attack on a skateboard, a unicycle, rollerblades, and a bike. The car gets sick of all the confusion and makes Invidious grow. Jake decides that all of this might be diffused if Invidious just asks Lavira out. He does, and she agrees. But first, she asks him to destroy the Rangers. Yeah, Jake, that backfired. Bull, Megazord, combination, sequence. You know, I got tired of it and I finally checked. This 23 minute episode spends nearly two minutes on things that they have sped through in other episodes. Invidious's reward for mustering up the courage to ask Lavira out was a cannon blast to the face and a samurai fire smasher slash. Though maybe fate did feel a little bit sorry for him as he actually survives and is smacked back up to the Armada ship. At Ernie's, Emma continues her quest to hook up her friends. She tells Jake that he was able to convince Invidious to ask Lavera out, so maybe he should practice what he preaches. But of course, just as he's 
about to Noah busts in with his soccer video, which has gone viral on whatever Facebook or YouTube is in their world. Um, did Orion get stuck in his locker? He's not in this episode at all. Love is in the Air is not bad. That's about all I can say. It's not the greatest episode of Power Rangers. It's not the greatest episode of Super Megaforce. Let me hoist the colors and tell you why. Episode 11, Love is in the Air. Pros, successful Mighty Morphin footage, creative original footage, and a funny story. Cons, filler at a time we don't need it. The morphing and Megazord sequences stalled for time. Average is an improvement. Love is in the Air gets three flags out of five. Love is in the Air is average Power Rangers. What's sad is that average is a vast improvement over what we've gotten the past couple of weeks, so I hope the waveform keeps tracking up. The most frustrating thing is, is that the past two weeks have been filler when we know we're only getting 20 episodes. I hope we get into some deep plot soon because we're running out of time. It does look like we'll get something new next week in episode 12, United as One, when the Megazord is damaged by a monster who uses his staff to steal human happiness, Emma uses unconventional methods to defeat this unusual monster. So, something that has not united yet will be combining into one. Hmm. Thanks so much for watching this Power Rangers Super Mega Force episode review. I'd appreciate it if you click that like button right down there, the thumbs up. And if you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well. I make new Power Rangers episode reviews every week that there's a new episode. And I also make other videos as well. Click the numbers on the monitor to see some of my other reviews. Thanks once again for watching, and may the power protect you. Bye. No, no, don't do it. Don't click like. Don't click subscribe. Don't watch the other reviews. What are you doing?